blood test. You see this, 16 patients in a hospital must undergo a blood test for a disease. It is known that exactly one of them has the disease. The hospital has only eight testing kits and has decided to pool blood samples of patients into eight vials for the test. The patients are numbered 1 through 16 and the vials are labeled A, B, C, D, E, F, G and H. The following table shows the vials into which each patient's blood sample is distributed. It took me a while to understand this. So we take patient blood from patient number. Oops. We take blood from patient number 1 and put it into vials B, D, F and H. Patient number 10 and put it into A, D, F and G. And then distribute all of these, test those 8 vials. And so A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H are the vials. And suppose it says that say B turns out uh, positive. And so, so we look at those vials and say okay B is positive. That means whichever patient's blood has gone into B, any one of them is likely to be the uh, is, is likely to have tested positive. So, if eight vials have B in it, then sorry, eight patients' blood has gone into B, then we can say one of these eight is unwell. Then we'll use other things to eliminate whatever the process is. Right? If a patient has the disease, then each vial containing his her blood sample will test positive. And so, if patient one has the disease, B, D, F, and H, all four will be positive. If a vial tests positive, one of the patients whose blood samples were mixed in the vial has the disease. One of the patients. If a vial tests negative, then none of the patients whose blood samples were negative. So I can say the positive test, the, the negative test is more powerful than the positive test. What do I mean by that? If vial B tests negative, fine. that means anything with a B in it, we can remove it. All of these have B, none of these patients have a disease. Straight away we can remove it. Suppose we say vial B is positive, then 1 to 8, any patient could have it. But vial B is negative, we remove all of these. So the, you can just say, look, vial B is negative, any patient whose blood has gone into vial B, that patient does not have the disease. Straight away, we can eliminate that. Right? So, interesting. Let's look at uh, the questions from now on. Suppose vial C tests positive and vial A, E and H test negative. Which patient has the disease? A, E and H test negative. All of these have A in it. They're all out. So they're all out. So A is negative. So all of these are out. Now let's come here. E and H are also negative. So, but while C test positive. So these four don't have a C in it. That we can remove straight away. B, D, F, H, B, D, F, G, B, D, E, H, B, D, E, G. C test positive. E and H turn, turn negative. So this has a H in it. So this is out. This has an E in it. This is out. This has E in it. This is out. C positive. A, E, H negative. So patient num number 6 has C and no A, E, H. So patient number 6 is a possibility and patient number 6 is the only possibility. Patient number 6 blood has gone into C but not in A, E and H. So when we eliminated A, E and H, C did not get eliminated and definitely turned out positive. So patient number 6 is the answer. Right. Lovely. Let's go to the next one. Suppose while A tests positive and while D and G test negative, A tests positive, D and G test negative. So A tests positive. All of these don't have A. We can ignore this chunk. A tests positive. And D and G test negative. So within A, we'll remove everything that has D or G. And this has a D, this is out. This has a D and G, this is out. D, this is out. D and G, this is out. This has a G, this is out. Again, G, this is out. So we have A, C, F, H and A, C, E, H. Still two possibility. And so it could have been patient 13 or patient 15. If A test positive, D and G test negative. We take that information. We've eliminated every test, every patient that tested for D and G. We took into account only patient that tested that had A in it, that had their blood go into A. So this whole chunk is out. Six out of those eight are out. But we still have two possibilities because A, C, F, H and A, C, E, H. Both patient 13 and 15 who have given their bloods into these, both of them will satisfy this condition. A positive and no D and G. 
Now we need to identify this. That means A, C and H are common. We need to look at while F or E, we test F and F turns out positive, then it's patient 13. F turns out negative, will be patient 15. And the other way around. So between these two, the distinguishing factor is F and E. So we'll need to look at the while, either while F or while E. Is there one of the choices? Yep, F is not there, E is there. That's what we look at. We test while E, we test positive, then it's patient 15. If we test negative, then it's patient 13. Lovely. Which of the following combinations of test results is not possible? While B positive, C, F and H negative. B positive, that's one of these that we can completely eliminate. C, F and H negative. F and H and negative. So it can't be this. It can't be this. There's an F, there's a H. Yep, this is possible. B positive, C, F, H negative. So if patient 4 had the, the disease, then B would be positive. And C, F, H would be negative because patient 4's blood is not going into C, F and H. So that is very much possible. A and E positive, C and D negative. A is only here. A and E positive. So A and E positive would be this, this, this and this. And within that C and D negative. D is negative, so this is not these two are not possible. C is also negative, these two are not possible. Nothing is possible. We don't have a patient where it, we, who could, who could, who could who's, if, if results A and D come positive and C and D are negative, we cannot match anything here. A and D being included and C and D not included, not there. This is A and D, this is A and D, A and D, A and D. Here, the, the two Ds, two Cs. So if patient 11 were positive, then A and D would turn positive, but D and H would also be positive. So D would also be positive. So that's not 11, not 12, not 15, not 16. So this is not possible. Look at next. While B and D positive, F and H negative. B and D positive, F and H negative. So this is out, this is out, this is out. But it could be this again. Patient number four, if patient number four has the disease, then B and D would be positive. F and H should be negative. Patient force blood is not going into F and H. That works. While A and G positive, D and D negative. A and G. So A and G positive. So A and G together are present here, 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 here. Within that, D and D negative. D negative. So this is not possible. D and D is not possible. This is not possible, but this is possible. Patient 14, if he had the disease, then A and G would have been positive. D and D would have been negative. So this much is also positive. Result B, this combination of results is impossible. There is no patient for whom A and D would have been positive. Who, if, whom, if, whom, if he or she had the disease, A and D being positive and C and D negative, that's an impossible set of results. Lovely. Let's go to the next one. Suppose one of the lab assistants accidentally mixed two patients' blood samples before they were distributed to the vials. Which of the following correctly represents a set of all possible numbers of positive test results out of the eight vials? It took me a long time to understand this. Mind you, uh, I didn't understand this question. When, when it has been said 5, 6, 7, 8, I was looking at patient 5, 6, 7, 8. I said, what is being tested? What is being missed out? Which vial is not tested? I didn't get the question at all. The question says, set of all possible numbers of positive test results. That is, how many positive results could be there totally? And so, uh, two accidentally mixed patients, two patients' blood samples. So, 1 and 2 could have been mixed, 3 and 4 could have been mixed, 11 and 7, 14 could have been mixed. Right? If 1 and 2 were mixed together, I'm just going to take a hypothetical. 1 and 2 are mixed together. Then, 1 goes into BDFH, 2 goes into BDFG. That means if 1 and 2 are mixed together and that one of them has positive and so then B, D, F, H, G, 5 vials would test positive. That's a number of vials that test positive is 5. So if 1 and 2 were mixed together and that were positive, then 5 could pass. So 5 is a possible number of vials that test positive. Lovely. Now if 1 and 2 were mixed together, and say vial number 16, patient number 16, not vial number 16, patient number 16 had the disease. 
then AC, EG, four vials would, would come from true. Basically, not mixed. The mixture is not happening for the one who has the disease. It is happening for the one who does not have the disease. Then four vials will test positive. All of these have four each. So four is possible. Five is possible. Four and five are possible. Let's look at this. But these choices are hinting. Even we can get a sense that even six might be possible. What do I mean by six? Let's say one and three. Right? One and three get mixed and one of them has the illness then B, D, F, H and E with B, D, H are common again five vials will have that so not one and three let's go let's go step one step further one and four B, D, F, H B, D, E, G or B, D, F, H, E, G six vials could come out positive if one and four were mixed one and four and one of them having the illness that would be six Lovely. So let's go step by step. Five vials is very much possible. Four vials testing positive. One and two are mixed up. And someone else, 16 tests positive. That is possible. Five is very much possible. If patients one and two were mixed up, we would have B, D, F, G and H. One of them has the illness. Right? Six is possible. One and four. For six, one and four could be mixed together. Seven, let's think about seven. We need to mix such that there is three not overlapping, only one common. So there's a B here, D, F, H, C, E, G. D, F, H here, C, E, G here. So if one and eight were mixed up and one of them had the illness, then B, D, F, H, C, E, G will all test positive. So one and eight and one of them being unwell would be a mixture of all of these. Is eight vials possible? All eight vials test possible. Is there, are they, is there a scenario where there is no overlap? Think about this. This All of these have B, all of these have A. So let's select one from here and one from there. This is C, G, this is D, F, H that we've already seen. A, D, B, D, F, H and A, C, E, G. If one and 16 get mixed up and one of them has the illness, then B, D, F, H, A, C, E, G will all test positive. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, all eight would test positive. So eight would test positive if one and 16 were mixed up and one of them had the illness. That means depending on the situation, we could have four vials testing positive, five, six, seven, eight. All of these are possible. So the number of vials that could test positive could be four, five, six, seven, and eight. All five possibilities exist. Four vials could be positive, five vials could be positive, six, seven, and eight. I, I found this tricky because I didn't get the question. I didn't read it properly. And so this sentence is very tricky. Set of all possible numbers of positive test results out of the eight vials. So how many of these vials turn out a positive result? The number of vials, not the patient number, not the vial name, the number of vials that give out that come out positive. That's what this is about. I didn't get that at all. It took me a while. I mean, I just it was a, uh, just shooting in the dark. I just simply didn't get the question. I had to read it twice, thrice to understand what the question was about and then take some help. So read question once, twice, thrice over. It's a very crucial habit. Gosh.